Okay. No Hi, book lovers. Welcome to the YouTube library. We are state accredited and corporate certified. My name is MD Njiru, the artist. Today we have a very special guest on our show, on the library. His name is Frank, and he will tell us more about himself. Apart from being a book lover, a book reader, he is also an author, and he will tell us more about himself. Karibu Frank. Asante sana, David. Uh, as you've been told, my name is Frank, and in full, my name is Franklin Yekunda. I hail from the beautiful county of Meru, and uh, as uh, David has said, I have a book. It's actually titled after my, maybe uh, what I can call a slang of what they call the people from my place, the American. So I'm from America, <laughs> if that's a word, and my book is The American Dream, The American Dream. So um, basically, um, I'm a born again Christian, Jesus Christ is Lord, and um, I'm a student of life, and uh, uh, I'm also a telecommunications engineer. That's that's my background, things that we did in school. But mostly, I'm not so much into telecommunication right now. I'm more into things to do with business, entrepreneurship, brand strategy, because that's my passion. So that's what I tend to to, to need to identify myself with nowadays, but my background is in telecommunications. So um, my book is on, uh, I this is a book I did back in 2019. It was actually, it was a dare, it was a dare. I, I dared my back then friend who is now my fiance, I dared her that I will write a book and she was like, no, why don't, I, I, okay, I just floated an idea, it's like we do, New Year's resolutions, and then you say you tell someone that I think I write a book next year, and then she she took it seriously and she kept me on my toes, and uh, actually January of uh, of uh, 2019 I started writing my book. Uh, that's when I I started writing it. So so far to cut the long story short, we'll talk more about the book and uh, how, how 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 I came to read it, how to do it rather. Um, it is published on Amazon. You can get it on Amazon. Apart from that, I'm self-published. I didn't want, to, okay, or rather I didn't have the resources to go the traditional way of publishing a book. And that's why I chose to self-publish myself. So I published on uh, Kindle Direct Publishing. And then I also found someone, a partner here in Nairobi who could help me do the final touches on the book even do the printing and uh, i know david you have not seen the ad cover but uh, i can say it's one of the best qualities book i've ever seen not to blow my own trumpet but because i've read books for quite some time and there's that texture of books that i like i don't like this this uh, photocopy papers on a book i like those vintage uh, creamish paper those thick GSM. So that's what my book is done on that. And uh, yeah, she, uh, that friend of mine did a great job. And actually, I recommend her anytime to any, anyone who wants to do a book because I've seen uh, the book she, di she did was even better than what some of the mainstream publishers do. So, uh, so my book literally sells, I sell it myself. Well, when I get an opportunity to sell it, and it's also on Amazon. So it has been read by my friends who are outside the country. They get it on Amazon, but people who are locally locally in Kenya, they get it from me. Okay. Yeah. We'll come back. So I think that's... <laughs> we'll come back to the okay. book later. But with okay, such a okay. fiancé who dares you to write a book, I think, what more can a man ask for? <laughs> uh, but, but actually, back then, she was just a friend. So... Uh, so I think she had the qualities <laughs> from the word go. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. picked those qualities and I read with them. And and I'm sure that she's she will watch this video, and I uh -huh. dare I dare her to dare you to write uh -huh. a second book. Actually, it's uh, okay. I think that's something we'll talk about later. <laughs> so I let me not go ahead of myself. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So Frank, I wanted to know when did you start having that passion for reading? Because I'm sure before you became a writer, you first started out as a reader. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, even we say even in leadership, for you to lead well, you must become a follower first. So um, 
actually reading is not something I can't like pinpoint the exact location or the exact time in uh, place in time that I started reading because especially in of course in school when I was in high school it, reading was not easy I don't know it's because they made us it reading not because I didn't like it but somehow it was laborious back then but I know I, I had a love for literature I loved literature, I loved lit literature a lot. So I'm saying literature, not Fasi, he saw Kiswahili sim domochangu. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I loved literature. And uh, from back then, I think that just small spark in me was just, it just, it, it was just kept being uh, rekindled and being fanned on until, until I started reading. But I remember after finishing high school, I read quite some books that it's like a stage of becoming a reader. You have to read some of these romance novels and stuff. So those are the books I read. I read so religiously for, for that almost a year that I was at home after high school. And then from that, I stopped reading when I joined college and then I went into engineering. And you know, engineering can be, when you're in engineering, don't think a lot about literature. Whatever that is it in your head is catch up theory and the not on theorem and all those other all those other things so um when i went to engineering to do engineering i kind of left the literature part of, of me actually it almost died it, it like died and then after finishing college that is like around 2014 that's when uh, i was working in some uh, it's a story that I share so well on my book. Eh? I was working for GoTV, selling some of this. It was during those times of Konda Digital and buying decoders and stuff. That's what I was doing. And then this one day, a friend who was selling second-hand books, and then there's this one book I saw. It was mostly the children's book, but one day I saw this book that stood out. It's called, it was written that when first, the business, um, Cash Flow Quadrant, yeah, Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. Yes. So yeah, so that actually that was the book that kind of rekindled my reading back because after I read that book, I remembered, oh, I, I, I actually was like, it was like my eyes were opened to a whole new world of different types of books that someone can read because I didn't know much about self-help books and self-development books. I didn't know much about that. So that's when I came to, to get, my eyes were open to these other all a journal of books that I started reading. So that was the book that I read. And that now started the journey. From there, I've read so many books. From then, that was in 2014-ish. And now we are almost, those are almost, almost close to ten, eight, eight, eight nine years. years. There. Yeah. Eight years, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I've been reading since then. Uh, yeah, I read about that book, The Cash Flow Contract, in, in your book, yeah. The American Dream. Mm. And I mm. guess it's one of the books that really influenced you. Yeah, it did, it did, it did. Yeah. Because, because uh, um, Cash Flow Quadrant, actually, it's, it's more of that kind of a book you read and you're like, why, why didn't they teach us this in school? Yeah, why didn't, why wasn't business? Because I used to hate business studies, but I was like, if they taught this in business, I could have done it too. To, to even MBA, I could even go to do masters on this. But now they are teaching different things. They are teaching things that weren't so much practical. So it is that kind of a book. Yeah, it really influenced me. I, I think most people when they read Robert Kiyosaki book, they start with thing, thing, what is it called? Poor dad, rich dad. I think for oh, you started you started on the deep end. I, I I was drawn in a deep end because I didn't know the, I didn't know even the existence of poor dad rich dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I didn't yeah. know about those. Yeah. Which other books have really influenced you or have an have really ha had an impact on you? Um, if I if I if I was asked this question when I was writing my book, yeah, I would have a different answer than I have right now. Okay. Because one of the one of the things I've come to realize in life, life is dynamic. Life is always changing. What used to matter to you yesterday is not the same thing that is mattering to you today. Yeah, and sure. uh, and also our minds and even our beings are also dynamic. We are growing, we are moving forward, we are becoming better. And that's why you are called human beings because you're always becoming. So um, right now, the book, one of the books that has the biggest 
impact in my life is the Bible. Okay. I know most people will not be expecting to hear this, but that's the truth. Okay. The Bible has some of this, what I can call eternal truth, because I realize whatever I've been reading almost, like I've read close to 100 books since I started reading, but you realize there's, there's always some missing links, but all these missing links in these books I've been trying to, re to, to read, they have like a hand point in this one book. Okay the bible so that's one of the books that are, has been very impactful in my life because as i've tried to explain and then there's this book called purpose driven life purpose driven life this is one of the books i read before he wrote my book i think i was reading it as i was writing my book okay. purpose driven life it's by um this pastor oh, come, come on i'm forgetting the name oh requiren <laughs> requiren but now those are the books that for me i came to realize that uh, as much as you might grow intellectually you might grow your intelligence and everything but if you leave your spirituality behind you because and when i talk about these books are not talking in this uh, kind of religious way of doing things it's about having a personal understanding of what these books really stands for so that's what i'm talking about so for me spiritual my spiritual being is at the at par and then apart from that now the answers that i could have given a few a few years later maybe back in 2019 i could have said the habits habits of the most effective people by um steve covey this is one of the books actually i read it once actually maybe twice back in 2017 or 2016 and the lessons in that book still they keep replaying in my in my mind every day because things like starting with beginning with the hand in mind those kind of a thing so uh it has re it has really been impactful in my life Hab habits of the most effective people then there's the magic of thinking big by Do dr david schwartz i think that's the correct pronunciation of that name then there is um the power of positive thinking by Dr. Vincent Norman Peel. Yeah. That's another book that has really impacted my life. Then the 5 a.m. club, even though I'm not a 5 a.m. club, huh? yeah. <laughs> or maybe not a consistent one, yeah. but 5 a.m. club, that books, that book really it changes the perspective of how we of how we look at things. Yeah? And how like 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 for me, for me, I'm I'm um, I'm either a night person, depending on situation, and then sometimes I'm a morning person. I do things like I, I do most activities that I could have taken a whole day to do, maybe at night at around 9 to 10, around there. And then sometimes I find myself before midday are the most uh, effective. So I re when I read the 5 a.m. club, I was able now to be able to more strategically plan my day so that in the afternoon i'm not a very i'm not a good uh, i'm not so productive in the afternoon then um there's the monk who so desperate by the same guy the guy who wrote 5 a.m club is robin sharma yeah. the monk who saw this ferrari still it's by robin sharma uh, which other book which other book oh mm. okay i've read so many books and it, i'm just trying to highlight the the ones that really stood out for me there's um i've always wanted to 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 be able to tell my story there's this book called resonate i can't I, i'm not i'm not i'm not, i don't remember the nini the other it's called resonate it's about presenting presenting your like how to become an effective communicator how to become how to to tell a story well and that's what that's one of the books that really helped me to like how, how now I wanted to tell my story because the way I wrote the book is not how I initially thought I would write it. I thought I would write a motivational book, but I ended up sharing my story instead. Yeah, yeah. it became so, more, more of an autobiography, like a memoir. Yeah, yeah. Instead, instead of a, I wanted to use the lessons in my life to kind of just like it's more of a motivate or rather these motivational books. You understand them. Yeah. But now I didn't, that's now, that, that's not, I, I, I resorted in going a story because the story is more relatable. Yeah. There are so many motivational speakers out there. We want people to tell us their stories and give their testimony so that we can 
we can be inspired so that's what i that, that's why i went with yeah. that space with that uh, way of doing it yeah yeah mm. yeah. yeah and talking of motivation the book the mm-hmm. americana dream really motivated me there is mm-hmm. a part that you talk about the the dean of studies and all that they they had given you a different course but <laughs> you went and you you challenged the status quo and was like yeah, absolutely i think i also need to do this more and, and, and like i need to challenge the status quo in many areas of my life like sometimes you just we just agree to to situations or to opportunities because that's mm. what is given but if we absolutely. can we can challenge that maybe mm. we can get better than than not just dish types to us yeah yeah, yeah. because uh, i can't imagine how many drums uh, or dreams yeah like my american dream how many dreams have been squashed just because someone didn't believe you knew or they didn't think you can do it and you trusted them yeah that's uh, them saying people will say things but now the problem is when you trust that person that they have a point so because now that's how you, a, dream, a dream dies you you have this thing you want to do you want to achieve this thing and then when you the person maybe you is at the door the door that sh- they should open it for you to get into that thing that you want to do they tell you otherwise and then you being the good person that you are you trust you believe them and when you believe them it means now it's like now you have allowed your dream to die and uh, for me as you're sharing i used to be very terrible in maths from actually I, most of it in high school in primary i was average but when i went to high school i became below average maybe because of the teachers because i don't know i can't quite explain why and i really loved technology i really loved things to do with engineering so that was like my first choice of courses i want to do it was in technology so when i went when i after after um, actually in my book i've shared that in high school i could be top 10 but the only guy with a d plus in maths but i'm top 10 <laughs> so it means everything else i was doing well but maths so when i went to when i was because i didn't i didn't qualify to be picked by these selections is it itangwa jab ama itangwa je i think yeah jab back then it was jab yeah 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 back then back then it was jab so i went to look for school and I wanted to do an engineering course so the dean looked at my sleep and was like okay we would have, would have loved the, your mean grade is good you have a b it was b minus yeah b minus but now this maths and physics because physics I, I, it wasn't so well but maths was worse he was he was like now we 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 propose that you take a business course instead he insisted insisted but me i insisted i wanted to do engineering it's either engineering or nothing or like go to look for a school somewhere else but now they gave me an opportunity just but he said you know in this school we give you an opportunity to change the course in the first few months if you see things they they go and get stuff you can come back to us and we'll change the course for you so but let's just admit you but now we are admitting you just because you performed well overall not because of you are qualified for this course and i said thank you and funny enough those are like uh, more than 10 years uh, later i've never gone to change my course and i graduated at top of my class with telecommunications engineering and uh, yeah so basically sometimes people's dreams get squashed just because someone told you you can't and yeah. and they, and i think the same approach you have also used it in in publishing your book because when you decide to publish the a book the traditional way you send your manuscript to the publisher sometimes they reject you have read of stories yes. whereby manuscripts are rejected even over 25 times yeah. you know but when you decide mm. like to self publish it means now that you have already you have decided to to chart your own path like Absolutely. you know yeah you're not limited by the other person everything is mm. under your control now yeah 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 yeah, mm. yeah that's <laughs> i think there's nothing much to add on that <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah so, so, something else maybe to go back a little bit when you mm-hmm. mentioned about the 5 am club and all that yeah but you also mentioned that you are usually a night person sometimes you are more mm. of a night person yeah 
Yeah. Sometimes it yeah, yeah. sometimes mm-hmm. you're more of a night person. Then mm-hmm. I remember that I read somewhere that if for example you you are looking for a book but mm-hmm. it's not if the title you are looking for a book is not there maybe mm-hmm. you're supposed to come up with that book. Okay. <laughs> This has yeah. it has just come to me like there's no book about the the night owl the people who work at the night owl. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all about are there. like like you like you I know only that my nini when 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 it's in the night I I am not so so sure. Yeah. <laughs> I I only do those tasks that don't mean me to work with someone it's just me. I just sit all by myself. Maybe and that you see that total silence. <laughs> so I don't know but for you I know I remember even when you're planning this I know maybe you are a night person also. So yeah uh, 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 anyway I I cut you before you finished <laughs> you finished talking oh, I was suggesting uh I was just suggesting uh a topic on which maybe you can meet on maybe in future can meet about the the night people people who are more creative at night <laughs> Uh okay okay if at all if at all that's that's something that I have something to talk about Yeah. Why not? But uh, for now I don't think I have <laughs> I don't have material for that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I think it's a good because there are so many people are so they're called nocturnal zama. That's I think that's the word. Okay. They are, they are, they are there and uh, I don't think there's much book every every book is talking about raising up early yeah, sure. and there are those people who want to go sleep late and wake up late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, so yeah, I think they need to be served. Yeah, mm, somehow, yeah. Do you have like a reading schedule? Uh reading schedule. Actually, frankly speaking, for the last two years, my reading has been quite um uh unpredictable. Okay. It has been quite unpredictable. Actually, since COVID, you know, I, I one thing I've come to realize. having too much time is also an enemy to productivity okay. because just having too much time koko nyumba the whole day most of the time you end up not doing so much when i used to do daily commutes and stuff i used to read more because actually most of my reading has happened in in commuting in buses eh? yeah it has happened i have read so many books on buses and Yeah and especially these I used to I used to live in Comarock so we used to do is this very good but dying uh, circle called the Boem those uh, those buses are the best environment for reading they have this yellow light in the night and then it's so silent in uh, most of the people who bought them are elderly no noise no music so I used to read so many books there so but for the last two years my reading has been erratic but uh, what i like to do right now because sometimes you can have there's something what i call um, knowing too much becoming knowing too much that now you become an enemy to yourself because it's like constipation knowledge constipation when you have read so much but acted on so little so you have so much knowledge you have an idea about everything but no results to show about anything so i tell people yes it's good to read but whatever you are reading are you putting it to practice or are you reading just for entertainment because there are some people who read for entertainment and then i realized my reading there there was a time i used to buy books just to feel nice because i've read uh, saying i've read this this month i've read two books instead of one so but then i, I sat down and asked myself yes i've read two books then what so i started being more 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 intentional in my, in the way i read so right now i don't have a schedule but i always have some data i'm reading okay. sometimes it's even going back to the books i read before and just focusing on one on one um uh, one thought let's say one like one chapter like a chapter or even a few a few chapters you focus on those and then put, put that book because that what matters for to you then so basically that's what i've been doing for the last especially last year i've done so, so much of that going back to the books that i've read uh, getting something out of it not reading the whole of it but really digging into something and then putting the book away yeah 
So, uh, but uh, for for reading schedule, I would what I what I used to do before before all these thing happened. The the one that used to work for me is um having you just set some time as aside and even having goals like a chapter a day. That was that one was the easiest. It doesn't mean if you wake up early, you can read that chapter a day. If you go to, before you go to sleep, you can save some twenty to thirty minutes to read one chapter, depending on the size of the book. And you can have a schedule that it's. I don't like people. You know, sometimes people over plan and over. They underestimate what they can do, and they, they overestimate, and then they end up being discouraged because they said I'll read their book in one week. And then it end up to be two months. So for me, it's about just have it simple. Say it's if it's one chapter per day, stick to that. If it's one hour of reading per day, stick to that. Just what works for you. Yeah. What's your current read? Uh, my current read, of course, I'm reading the Bible for the I don't know. Um, that one is 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 a must. And then there's this book called Grow by Jim Stengel. As I said, I'm I'm so much into entrepreneurship and building brands. My brand is being frank. It's actually being frank is the American dream, and uh, there's so many things I want to do under the brand of being frank. And um, so this book about uh, grow by Jim Stengel. It's a book about how the best brands in this in this world are built, and that's my current read. Yeah, that's what I'm reading right now. What was your yeah, last? But my last read, my last read. Uh, I've been there's, there's uh, two books I've been going back and forth with there. But uh, there's this book called um, Storyteller's Secret. Uh, the name the, the other the other's name is Stuart. Okay, it's a book I read from I read sometimes back. So I've been going back to it. So this it's the book that I've been before I, I picked up the grow the this one the grow is what I was reading storyteller secret but uh, the other the other's name has lost is lost <laughs> I can't remember the yeah it's called storyteller secret but I can maybe I can even check it out online yeah okay. mm. I once watched an an interview of Fifty Cent and you've seen mm -hmm. that when 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 he's recording his music during the yeah. the the writing process and all that, he, mm -hmm. he he sometimes turns off music from other artists because he mm -hmm. feels like they they kinda influence him. Him to write what? Uh, uh huh. Yeah, subconsciously they are like influencing him. So I, I just wanted to know like an other during this time that you are in the writing process, do you feel like the when maybe you read? Maybe when you read Robert Kiyosaki, Robin Sharma, and the others, you feel like they like they like influence you like somehow whatever you're writing is partly their thoughts. Um, there's something I call the reason why I share my story is I value. Okay, one of the things that scares me so much is to be like someone else. And maybe if subconsciously I'm behaving like someone else, it's because it's subconscious, not that it's conscious. Okay. So yeah, it's possible that, of course, we are we are total some of the things that we have interacted with, the people you have interacted with, the books you have read, yeah. they all influence how we think, how we, the tone we used on doing things, our perspective, they all influence that. That's that's something for sure. But what what I'm always keen on is mm -hmm. like for example, if I share with you my perspectives i don't want you to take my perspectives as frank's perspectives and then you take frank's perspective and then make make them the way they are you copy paste them to david's perspectives no i want to share frank's perspectives so that you david can pick whatever that you feel fits right with you you digest it and then you interpret it in your own ways so that it comes out when it comes out maybe it could be the same concept but the technique in the way it was brought out it's totally different because now you have given it your personality you understand so so yes that that uh, i like what 50 cent says because it's very true i cannot be reading a book and trying to write my own and sometimes you know it, there's what we call it's a dry it's like a dry day you're trying to do 
100 words na zipatikani and then you go read a book that maybe it's even in the line that you are reading you are trying to write you'll find yourself tempted to to kind of share those insights that you have gotten from that book so that's very true but i always like when i read something i want to take it digest it and then have it own it it's called owning the content i own it even if i'll share those concepts that i learned from some someone else i want to share them in my own perspective in a way that is unique and distinct to me frank yeah mm. okay i get you so yeah. what new projects shall we expect from frank um this deep, this book I was actually I, I already have another book the, when I wrote the American dream some people came back and told me I think this book you wrote it well but uh, I feel there's something missing like I wanted something more like some kind of direction some kind of uh, direction pointing thing because I talked so much about purpose and uh, and I think one of the one of the biggest question any human being can ask themselves is what is my purpose why am i here that's that question of why am i here of course it comes in the line of other questions like who am i those kind of other questions but who why am i here is also is also part of you trying to get your own identity so after talking about purpose i felt that i left people hanging about purpose and everything and then i came up with this book it's called actually it's a three three step thing or it's like um a model three step model called you disc- uh, discover design develop and it's called the prosperity manifesto it's a small book about 50 pages or less it's called the prosperity manifesto and this this manifesto is actually a workbook for the american dream for just not 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 a continuation but rather something that now you can take the lessons that you learned from the american dream and then now put them to work you as a person so that you go sit down with it and then with these three steps of discover design develop you are able to discover your purpose you, you are able to design the way you want your life to be because at the end of the day god has given us the ability to be co-creators in our own lives and the uh, the most important part is just identifying what did god create me to do once you identify that now actually god you, you know proverb says that uh, in the book of proverb says that to man's be- to man's belongs the plans of the heart but it's the god that establishes his steps so for you there's that part of designing sitting down and planning things and then god to direct your path and that's now how it's developed so that book it uh, for the people who wanted it i they got it and they were able to it's something that you it's practical you just sit down and write a few things so that you, you get the the gist of it but now that was uh, an extension of the american dream projects there's this other book I've, i'm writing actually I've, it's just really stored because i started it back in 20 it started in 2020 20, 2020 after covid eh? but um i kind of stalled it because of some personal stuff but um i think there are some things i want to settle in my life first before i continue because this is totally this now it's it's like a fictional story that i'm sharing but based on real life experiences of other people I, as in i'm taking experiences my own experiences experiences of the people i've met along the way in life people i know and then culminating them to be like experiences for one person and now this this one person the main character will experience things that so many people have experienced so actually it's called it's called mining silver mining silver in the clouds that's the that's the project i'm working on so uh, last time i checked on it i was at around uh, 60 pages but i uh, actually in the story it's like a quarter told so it's a big it's a big one because and now it's 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 not easy to write as i wrote american dream because it's so totally creative it's nothing you are replaying from the past you have to be creative and to make it engaging so probably next year let's say next year but uh, if god by god's grace if i can have the grace to continue with it this year i don't mind but there's some things i need to settle in my life first yeah 
that, that's an amazing project i'm looking forward to it also steve job steve job sister mona simpson mm. has written several yeah. fiction book based on the on the life of steve jobs mm. but they are fiction no? but part yeah, of it fiction. is from the life of steve jobs yeah. so the I'm lessons that they are Yeah. Mm. I'm waiting to to read your book. You, you know, actually, 